All right, our next theorem, called the cauchy gorsaw theorem, is one of the most important theorems we'll look at this semester. And it says this, if f is analytic at all points inside and on a simple closed contour C, then the contour integral of f over C is just zero. Really powerful result. And what's nice is I don't need to try to find an antiderivative of f. I don't have to check that. I just have to know that it's analytic. And as we're going to see later, that's something that we can check often easier than we can find an antiderivative. Uh, okay, so let's take just a moment. I can't resist to talk about why this is true. And so here's the idea. Uh, you can read the book for details, but I just want to show you an interesting connection. So I'll call this a remark. If you take the integral over c of f of z dz, I'm thinking about f of z as u of xy plus i v of xy. I plug in my parameterizations, and I actually get contour integrals in the calc 3 sense. And I actually can invoke Green's theorem. And so I get the double integral over r of minus v partial x minus u partial y dA plus i times the double integral over r of u partial x minus v partial y dA. This is using Green's theorem. Uh, and I, I do Green's theorem both on the real part and the complex part. And now I remember, though, that, wait, I'm analytic, so I satisfy the Cauchy-Riemann equation. So this is 0, right, because uh, u partial y is net minus v partial x. And this is 0 because u partial x is v partial y. And so it follows immediately that this is 0. Interesting little background story. To use uh, um, Green's theorem to prove this, you need to assume that f prime is continuous. It turns out that's true. If f is analytic, f prime is analytic. Therefore, f prime is continuous. However, this tool is how people usually prove that. So even though um, what I just presented to you is true and it works, the proof in the book does not uh, use this method because we don't want to assume that f prime is continuous just yet. We want to actually prove this result without that, and then we'll be able to prove that whenever f is analytic, f prime is analytic as well. But I wanted you to see the connection with calculus 3. All right, so with that in mind, I want to go to another definition, and we'll see another theorem. So definition. We've talked about domains, and now I want to talk about a simply connected domain D. Well, first off, it's a domain. And let's just take a moment and remind ourselves, right? A domain is a non-empty, open, connected set. What does it mean to be simply connected? Well, it's such that every simple closed contour within D encloses only points in D. So that's our definition. Let's do some examples. I'll switch colors just because I can. So examples, uh, well, first off, let's start out with um, something like this. I'll use my uh, highlighter here to indicate that this is an open set. The edges here are open. Um, maybe we've got a region like this. So, so first off, this is a simply connected domain. Next example, let's look at example number two. Let's think about uh, a set that looks like this. Maybe we'll highlight in the middle here as best we can. This isn't going to look very pretty, but you'll get the idea. So ask yourself if this set that I'm highlighting 
is a simply connected domain. So is it a domain? The answer is yes. It's open. It's connected. It's not empty. It is a domain. So let's just say is a domain, but it's not simply connected. And why is that the case? Well, I can draw a simple closed contour. Here it is. Here's a simple closed contour. And there are points inside of that contour that actually don't lie in D. And on a similar note, let's look at uh, one more example. This is one we've looked at before. So we looked at the domain D, where D is the set of all Z, oops, Z in the complex plane such that the modulus of Z is positive. And so what does that look like? Well, it's just everything delete the origin, right? So I'm removing this, the point at the origin, and then everything else is in D. And again, you can tell this is not a simply connected domain. This is a domain, but it's not simply connected because I can draw a closed curve C that um, doesn't contain a point in D. One more word on this. The book, our, our book avoids the idea of path deformation, but I do want to mention it because it's a really useful concept um, as we're going to talk about in just a moment. But the idea is if you took uh, this path, let's go back to example two, this path, and I shrink it, it ought to be able to shrink and collapse to a single point inside D, and I can't do that here because there's this big hole in the middle. If I scroll up to the previous example, if I draw some path, I can shrink that path down to a single point living inside D. So this one is simply connected. And then the same thing here, if you shrink this path down, you're going to get hung up around you're going to get hung up around the pole. So this path um, doesn't shrink to a point inside D. All right, so I want to look at uh, one more theorem with you. So this theorem says the following. So it says if F is analytic throughout a simply connected domain D, then the contour integral of f of z over c is 0 for every closed contour c lying in D. Pause the video for a moment. Make sure that you understand the statement of the theorem. Let's scroll up and actually compare this to our previous result. So if I scroll up, our previous theorem, the cauchy gorsat theorem, said that if f is analytic at all points inside and on a simple closed contour C, then the contour integral is zero. And so the point is we're working over a simple closed contour C. Okay, when you scroll down to this next theorem, it says, hey, as long as you're analytic throughout a simply connected domain, then the contour integral over a closed contour is zero, regardless of whether C is simple. See, my C here in this theorem doesn't need to be simple as long as you're working in a simply connected domain. So let's actually point that out as a remark. Remark, so C need not be simple in the above theorem. Okay, so let's do an example. Uh, let's work out a problem together, and I want to show you how this goes. So let's do, um, let's say, I don't know, let's look at... Uh, the domain D, 
is going to be the set Z such that the modulus of Z is less than 2. And by the way, this is a simply connected domain. You can see it, right? This is just the open circle centered at the origin of radius 2. So I'll go ahead and sketch that for us. Something like that. All right. And I want us to integrate uh, the following function. So let's integrate, um, let's say, I don't know, z e to the z over uh, z squared plus 9 to the seventh dz. And I want to integrate this over the contour c. And I'm going to pick a wild, crazy c. Here's my c. I think I'll go this way. And so the point is, uh, first off, this is a very nasty function to integrate. You really don't want to rely on the previous theorem that we looked at, which says you need to have an antiderivative. Don't want to do that. Uh, second off, this curve C is majorly not a simple closed curve. It's closed, but it's not simple. So I can't use, let's scroll back up for a minute. I can't use the course you go, the cauchy gorsoff theorem because C isn't simple. And even worse than that, I can't use the previous theorem. I think I don't have that on this file. But the theorem that where we said the following are equivalent. Let me scroll up. Uh, yeah, I can't use this theorem because finding an antiderivative is going to be very, very difficult. In fact, uh, it may not even be possible. So for our problem, I really need this latest result, which tells me that hey, as long as your analytic threw out a simply connected domain D, then the integral is zero over any closed path lying in D. So we should ask ourselves, where does this function have problems? Well, it has problems uh, at Z equals plus or minus 3i. Thankfully, those are outside of my region. So inside my region, this function is analytic. And so I instantly know that this integral is 0 by the above theorem. So as long as you're analytic inside a simply connected domain D and your curve C is closed, need not be simple closed, then the integral is 0. Let's look at one last result together. Uh, the book, your book calls this a corollary. I'm going to call it a theorem only because it's a corollary to a different theorem. I'm not going to show you the result that this is a corollary to, but it's a really useful uh, tool to keep in mind. So last result, let's let C1 and C2 denote positively oriented simple closed contours. And I want to assume that C1 lies in the interior of C2. All right, so let's just off to the side draw a little picture. What are we talking about? So maybe I've got uh, something like this. So here's, I, I want to be positive, so I'm going counterclockwise. Here's uh, C2, and then maybe here is my C1. All right, and so the next part of the theorem says if F is analytic on C1 and C2, so on the curves themselves, and the region between, then in fact the integral of f over the big curve, C2, is the same as the integral of f over the smaller curve, C1. And uh, again, the book uh, very nicely avoids any of the ideas of path deformation. But what this is really saying is if you can collapse C2 down into C1 continuously in the right sort of way, then you can 
uh, then these two integrals are the same as long as f is analytic on both of them and in the region between. So this is just a useful result because it can let you switch to a nicer curve. Let me give an example. Suppose you have like a square and uh, you'd really rather integrate over a circle because the parameterization for a circle is much, much easier to do. So you can switch from one to the other depending on your function and all of that. I don't know if you can hear the mower outside, but it just started mowing, so that's kind of fun. Uh, all right, so let me uh, go ahead and write down some homework problems. So I'll put these everywhere else as well, but I would like you guys to do the following problems. Uh, page 135, if you could do 1, 2, and 4. Page 149, if you could please do problem 2. And then page 160, I'd like you to have a look at 1, A, B, C, E, and then 2, A. So like I said, I'll post these on um, Campus Web and Microsoft Teams, and I'll probably email you as well. But you've got what you need to get going.